What's up everyone, April Dunham here. In this video, I'm going to share my top three uses for the timer control in Power Apps. But first, here's the intro. Up first is animations. The timer control can be used for loading graphics, flyout menus, and much more. Let's open this timer demo app that I have and take a look at some of the animations that I'm using on this landing screen. You can see I have a Pac-Man moving across the screen. I have a loading message that is flickering and fading in and out. I have a spinning graphic that's rotating. And if you saw at the very beginning, there was a bar that initially went across the screen and got bigger as the timer went on. And you can see the timer running here in the bottom left hand corner, just running in five second increments and continually repeating. This is a great use case for the timer control and probably one of the most common use cases. If you need to do any animation whatsoever in Power Apps, you're going to have to use the timer control to do it in some way. If you've looked at any of the Power Apps examples, you've probably seen that you can even create full-fledged games within Power Apps, and that's all done using the timer control. I've seen examples out there of Power Apps, Pac-Man, Flappy Bird, Mario, all kinds of different games created within Power Apps, all using the timer control to handle the animation piece. Now let's take a look at this app in the edit mode just to see how I'm doing these three animations right here. Now that we have that open in edit mode, let's take a look at how we actually add in the timer control first. So if you click on the insert tab, select input, scroll down, you'll see an option for timer. So that's what I did here. And I have this in the bottom right hand corner. There's a few properties that we need to be aware of with the timer. The first is the duration. It's important to know that this is the length of the timer in milliseconds. So you see right now I have 5,000, that's actually five seconds or 5,000 milliseconds. So you can control how long the timer should run in this duration property. Then we have these toggles for if the timer should repeat, if it should auto start, and if it should auto pause. In this demo that you saw here, I had the auto start and repeat on so that it would continually keep going in six second increments. I've went in here and I've configured the timer to be five seconds, auto start and repeat. Now let's take a look at how we did some of these animations. I'll start with Pac-Man here. So first of all, this is just a SVG. Power App supports animated SVGs. You can just upload those as media, which is what I did here. And I've went to media and inputted a image control. And I've just pointed that to that Pac-Man image. But if you recall, when we loaded that, Pac-Man was going vertically across the screen like that. Each control that you add into Power Apps has X and Y coordinates that you can set. So if we want to control the location horizontally across the screen, that would be the X coordinate. So we can select our image control, go to the drop down, and select the X property. Now all I did here was I set the X coordinate of this image to the value of my timer divided by three so that it goes across the screen at a third of the pace of the timer as it's running. So you can just point that directly to our timer value, which is called timer welcome. And if you do a dot after that, you see you have all these properties that we can take and consume. So for one, we can get the duration and do something based off of that. But then if we scroll down, you see that we have an option for value. So that's going to get the current value of the timer as it's running. So that's going to auto increment up as the timer continues. And I just wanted to go slightly slower. So that's why I'm doing the divided by three. Now I'll make it go uh, the value of the timer so you can see that that, and we'll play it real quick. So you can see that's pretty fast. So that's just why I went in and did the divided by three. So it just goes across the screen at a, a slightly slower pace. That's really all that you have to do to make something scroll across your screen. So what this is going to do, since the timer is set to repeat, it's going to just keep going and moving across the screen. It's going to fall off and come back on. But we just looked at how we can control the X position of an object based on a timer control. Now let's take a look at this icon that was moving around in circles. This is just one of the built-in Power Apps icons. 
the reload icon that I've added. And what we're doing here is in most of the icons in here, there's a property called rotation. So you see, I have that tied to our timer control. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the value of the timer control as it goes around in increments and dividing that by two. Now you'll see if I just remove this though, I just wanna show you how you can adjust the rotation of an icon first. So if I have it at zero right now, you can see it's upright that way. Now I change it slightly to say 30. You can see that the arrow moved a little bit over. And I can change it to a complete 90. And then now the arrow is there on the right. So you can see just how you can increment the rotation of the object. So to animate it, just bind it to the value of your timer. And then just adjust how fast or slow you want it to be rotating according to what you divide it by. So I can change it, for example, to divide it by 5. You see it's moving around much slower than what we first saw when we loaded this. That's pretty straightforward. Now let's look at the last example, and that was this loading message that was kind of fading in and out from a dark to a light red, and then kind of completely going away and then coming back again. Let's take a look how to do that animation. For this, I've just inserted a label control, typed in some text. Now for that animation, we're using a function of the color property of the label. There's a function called color fade. What you can do is you can pass it in a color and then tell it how much to fade that color by. So we're using this to give it a color of dark red initially, and we're binding that to our timer value and dividing it by a thousand to get a nice even fade. So as the timer increments, it will eventually fade away completely. So all these combined are really nice ways to integrate the timer for different animations and effects and loading graphics within your apps. The next use case for the timer control I want to share is automatic redirects. This is a trick that I like to show in my quick tips for beautiful power apps talk that I do. Ideally, from a user experience standpoint, you want to make your app as intuitive as possible and reduce the number of clicks needed and always be communicating to your user. So one way to do that is with a success screen. So if I go in and add a new item here, and click Submit, you'll see that I'll be taken to a success screen letting me know that my request was submitted. And you'll notice also there is a redirecting countdown going on in the background. So what I have just did is I've communicated to my user that the request was successfully submitted, but then also automatically redirect them back to the home screen so that they didn't have to make any extra clicks and can go in and create a new request if need be. Let's make that success screen work. It's pretty straightforward. The first is to go in and obviously add a new screen for the success message. So in my case, I just use the success screen template. And then back on this new screen, on the submit button, I'm submitting the form, and then I'm using the navigate function to navigate to that success screen. Now here is where the timer comes into play. I went in, inserted a timer, set the duration to five seconds, now for this, I don't want it to repeat. I want it to go for five seconds and then stop. But I do want it to auto start as soon as I hit the page. And you notice that I had that label that was doing a countdown. So ideally when you're using these timers, in most cases, you never want the actual timer to show. It will generally be used in the background. So although I'm surfacing this up here just to show how it's working, when you go to publish your app, for this case, you'll probably want to set the visibility of the timer to off. But I did want to communicate to my users that they would be redirected and give them a countdown. So what I did to accomplish that was I added in a label, manually typed in the redirecting in text, but then I'm using the round up function and I'm taking my timer value on this screen and I'm rounding that up to get just the seconds from the millisecond value that is stored. And I'm going to round that up so that it does a nice countdown for my user to see. Now let's take a look at how did we make it after that timer ran automatically move on to the other screen. Well, in your timer control, there's a property called on timer end. So you can put in a formula here to run when the timer is done executing. All you need to do is use the navigate function and have it navigate back to the page that you want it to go. So as you can see, this was very simple to implement and it goes a long way to helping the user experience in your Power Apps applications.
Now that brings us to the last use case for the timer control and that's background refreshes. This will come into handy when you have a use case for your app where you want to communicate something for your users. So for example, to demonstrate this, I have a screen where I want to show the current occupancy of a room. Now this is something that in this case, I might have a power app showing on a screen in a lobby or on a tablet somewhere. And I wanna to communicate to users what the current occupancy is. So this would be just up there running for who knows how long. This would be a perfect use case to have your data source be refreshed on a schedule within Power Apps. That's something that the timer control can help us do. So you see I have a timer control on this page that's running for six seconds. And I can see my current occupancy is 15 out of 20 allowed. Now if I go to my data source, it's just a SharePoint list. So I'm going to manually change the occupancy in the back end. So if I go to my data source, I'm going to change this occupancy and then we'll go back to the Power App. The timer's gonna resume and you see that it updated, did an automatic refresh after that six seconds was up and is now showing the new occupancy. And it even did a nice animation because I'm using an SVG to dynamically fill in this circle. When it did refresh, it had that extra effect of seeming like it was animating the filling in of the circle when it updated the occupancy. Now for this to work, on the timer control, you'll want to set the duration to whatever you want. Um, six seconds is probably obviously a little bit too aggressive, so maybe you need to have it refresh every minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it might be, just set that duration accordingly. And the important piece of this, you'll wanna make sure that you have the repeat set to on so that it continually goes and refreshes and re for that data. And auto start set to on so that when you load up the page, it starts automatically. To make it update the count here, we'll go again to the on timer end property of the timer, and we're just going to use the refresh function and pass it in the data source that we wanna refresh. Since that is bound to this control, it'll automatically refresh it for us. Let's take a look at this control. This is a component that I've got from the Power Users community. So with this control, it's using an SVG and it lets us pass it in a maximum value which you can just hard code or pull from a data source, whatever. But then you can define the value that should be filled in. That's what we have here. And for that, I just wanted to get the first item for demo purposes that was in this list. So I'm just using the first function, passing it in my data source and getting the current occupancy field, which is this field in my SharePoint list. So now as someone goes in in the back end and updates this value, we refresh it when the timer control ends every X seconds or minutes, and this value will get refreshed and the fill color will change based off of the number of occupants from our data source. If those were the top three use cases I had for you for the timer control. I hope that this inspired you to use the timer control in your apps and think of creative ways to use it. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.